All right, this is the third video I'm doing in a series on subwoofers and subwoofer arrays for pro audio. In this part, I will cover the orgasmatron or vortex system that I used on Blink-182 and Chili Peppers tours, as well as an end fire arc array that I used on Soundgarden and then Chili Peppers and has become my favorite arrays. In the first two videos, I covered setups like single sub, one sub per side, four per side, a line across the front, delayed arcs, and numerous other configurations. You might want to check those out if you haven't, and let's get to it. Four per side vortex. And so now this is, this sub is set at zero milliseconds. This is it plus a certain amount of time. This is plus another amount of time. This is plus another amount of time, such that sound comes out of here, and these all add sound to it at the appropriate time for the um, distance that they are placed. And a 45 degree focus means that they're, um, I've got them timed to sum here. So when you put a microphone or a, a measurement, time measurement here, the sound coming out of this plus the sound coming out of that will come out about 45 degrees. Uh, for this and then these ones here are focused direct on and direct on So let's go ahead and see what that does. So here we are at 20 Hertz and 40 Hertz and now we've got excellent coverage now this setup was designed for arenas I was really looking to get this 270 degree coverage. I wanted to cover all the way around back to here um, and if you look at some of the earlier designs that we did um, the, the coverage in this area is absolutely unusable. Uh, we were looking at trying to get 120 to 150. Getting 270 is a whole different application and um, can be useful for some uh, events. And here we are at 50 hertz. Again, we've got this wonderful 270. It's a little light in the center. Um, excellent coverage here off to the sides. And most arenas have a lot of energy needed in this direction because that's where they are it's usually up in here where uh, a lot of people are in that oval or donut shaped venue and look at that cancellation on stage is quite good um, energy is radiating up towards the um, desirable areas and we've got um, our fingering here but it looks like it's moving pretty quickly the nulls are not staying in the same spot. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we can use these indicators here to see that um, the nulls are moving. We don't have a whole octave. Well, we're close to an octave there, but it's... And so the main problem is just off of mix. And 125, 250, and 160, we're starting to fall apart. We've got some frequency response. So if we want to... Uh, run our arrays up to one half of the frequency where they start to fall apart an octave below i would say this is an excellent 80 hertz array because at 160 it starts to deteriorate 200 250 i would say this is uh, quite good up to 80 hertz and it looks good at 80 and it looks good all the way up to an octave above 80 200 250 We've got this node traveling due to some differentials in the time. But the look of the rig and the placement of it is quite good because it's square. Um, I actually had special blow through risers made and so the artists could, so chili peppers could climb up and um, perform from on top and there was lights underneath and these became stage extensions. Um, also by changing the times a bit we could collapse the, um, if you put this at zero milliseconds and at this at a slightly higher, like plus two milliseconds, and then this one, and then this one, you can uh, focus the energy forward. You can go from a 270 to a 180 or to a, um, a 150 or so. So you have the ability, because of this three-dimensional array, to rotate your coverage. The timings can be quite complex and it can get messy, but it is a, a very useful array for dealing with a wide variety of venues. And I found that this is extremely handy. Um, having 
the setup be the same every day. So I'm not going to have to get up early out of the bus and tell everybody we're going to set up different every day. What are we going to do? Every day, the text would set the system up the same and then electronically I could alter and uh, fine tune the coverage to optimize for that venue. And also since it was built into the stage and the risers were on top, we didn't have the bill we didn't we didn't have the ability to change it every day and we could lock into and commit to that. Um, that was um, what we ended up calling the orgasmatron setup. Um, three dual 18 inch spaced with a single end fire per side pointed 45 degree output. So this was kind of the culmination of the sub array efforts on the very, three tours, the Blink, Chili Peppers, and Soundgarden tours that I was really diving in and experimenting on. And this, is ended, this ended up being what I used for Soundgarden. Uh, Having no spacing between the arc is important for that high frequency response. Um, and it, this is using the end fire. Remember, we had the end fire array where we were 45 degrees pointed out, but it got a little dead in the center. Uh, the sound comes out of this one first. And then all three of these radiate at the same point in time as the sound wave passes them. They all join in and propagate it further. And from this perspective here, Sound from this sub hits this sub and gives cancellation here. This sub to this one gives cancellation here. This one to this one gives cancellation. What I found interesting and wasn't intuitive to me was that this, with three subs up front, one, tra one train of thought would indicate that you would need three subs behind. Does this need to be three to those three? And um, if you actually do that and build up these arrays and sound vision or whatever and map, um, you'll find that's not the case. This one sub doesn't know that it's against three. The sound from this sub propagates this way and this one will cancel it out. The sound from this sub propagates this way and this one will cancel it out. So this one, rear sub is propagating energy in all directions and the energy from this one cancels here, the energy from this one cancels here, the energy from that one cancels there. So we get a nice null in the stage region. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, here we've got um, coverage at 20. We're seeing the same thing we see with all uh, arrays that we've shown where we've got um, these two nodes, the interference nodes, and um, we're not getting a lot of cancellation at 20, but on the other hand, we don't have a lot of energy at 20, especially with a band like Soundgarden, and um, unless you're doing EDM, uh, most artists don't have a lot at that frequency. At 40 hertz, we are starting to see it shift forward a bit. We do have energy on stage, but the primary energy focus is out here. So you can see it's much more red, and here on stage, it's into the yellow instead of two or three levels up on the red. Um, we can see our key here. So the yellow is like 12, is like 11 dB. What is that? 10, um, 0, minus 6, minus 12, minus 18. So the yellow is like minus 15, and the red is like minus 8. And this bright dark red here is like 0. So we're like maybe 15 dB down um, at 40 hertz back here compared to up front here. 12 to 15 dB down. Now at 50 hertz, we're doing great. Look at that. That's just the stage is just carved out and we've got a nice smooth coverage here out front. Um, I can go back and we can see how fast, well, you can see these lines here and we can see how fast these nodes are moving. Um, look at that at 63. This looks great. Um, Power Alley is no more, not much different than it is here. We've got coverage throughout the audience area, a fairly even level. Uh, we're getting some blowback at 80, where most subs start to roll off. And we've got excellent coverage all the way throughout the region, and even into 270. So this is um, um, quite smooth. We saw a volume drop there, but we didn't really see uh, coverage change. And look at that. It's still got a nice smooth coverage. This is back to um, 
at 160 it's still looking good smooth throughout and 200 and 250 we're starting to see something here so it may be indicating that we could slightly point them inward um, but we have an extremely smooth this is a great sounding setup it's a very very clear distinct you know, if you were to have a stereo sub, doom, 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 it just, you can really hear the dynamics of it are clear and distinct. Uh, the stereo of the sub is clear and distinct. It's powerful out front. Um, it's got excellent rejection on stage. So this is, uh, for a non-mono source, this is a uh, um, very, very good. Um, and here's a summary of... Um, Subs in general, sub arrays, um, something, the things that I'm looking for. Arrival times. Sound quality tends to be inversely proportional to the number of arrival times. If you can reduce your arrival times by getting your sources as close together and not having spaces between them, you're going to see a distinct advantage over um, having multiple sources and trying to sum them at some distance, which will never happen very well. And I think that's it. Um, for now, um, let's go ahead and wrap this up. And I have more to come. I will do um, videos on sound vision and how to create some of these arrays um, how to move stuff around and see it there. And um, cool, I hope you enjoyed this and more to come. <laughs>